everyone, this is Karen. Hey everybody, I'm Shane. Today we're looking at part two of how parents and teens can get along. And the vocabulary words are advice. Advice. Albert is glad for all of the advice that you've given him. I'm a smart guy and I'm very nice. Aww. Text. Text. She sent a text saying that she'd be late. Hmm. Chat. <laughs> chat. I had a nice chat with my friend yesterday. Emotion. Emotion. Brenda felt many emotions as she walked out of her old home for the last time. Aww, so sad. Probably. Probably. It's probably a good idea to discuss this with the others first. So last time we mentioned, you know, a lot of problems that we had with our parents when we were teens and a yeah. lot of fights that we had. Yeah. So what could be some of the things that, you know, maybe we would have done or could have done differently? I think communication is really important. Um, your parents worry about you. You're right. So if you just send them a text message to let them know where you are, mm -hmm. or maybe even to just, you know, wish them a good day or something, that could really do a lot. And That's true. talking in person with your parents is important and then they can understand what you're up to or what you're feeling and you can have a better relationship yeah. with your parents right but what if sometimes you're feeling really really upset or uh, angry uh, and they don't want to talk you need to calm down so oh there's something called the pen method pen like as in like writing pen pen p-e-n -E okay so if you're really really angry mm -hmm. pause pause p for pause that means to calm down and stop Okay. Take a deep breath. Then okay. empathy. Empathy to understand another person's perspective. Yeah, so understand how your parents are feeling. Don't just react to them. Okay, and then N stands N for needs. needs. You can express your needs right. and then let your parents listen to you. But when you sound very calm, when you sound calm, people are more likely to hear you and yeah. they don't just hear your emotions. Yeah, so I think that's a really good advice to... Any relationships. Right, for not just parents, but in any relationship. You're right. P-E-N. That's awesome. The pen method. Okay. Let's Enjoy today's lesson. more. Mm -hmm. How Parents and Teens Can Get Along A good relationship with your parents can ease their fears and worries. Here is some advice from experts on how teenagers can have a stronger relationship with their parents. These days, it's easy to send a text message or have an online chat, but face-to-face -face contact is still important. Take a few minutes a day to sit down and talk with your parents. Today's lesson is called How Parents and Teens Can Get Along, Part 2. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. And I'm Mike. And in yesterday's part of our article, we learned about how parents worry. They worry about their kids all the time. They might project their fears onto the kids. They might worry that they're not doing the best for their kids as parents. And they also worry about the future. What will the kids be like in the future? Will they make mistakes now that will have bad effects on their life? Really, a lot of these problems just come down to parents caring a lot about their kids and may maybe worrying a little bit too much. But for the kids, this can be kind of annoying. This yeah. can really make them feel like they never do anything right, the parents never leave them alone, like they're living life under a microscope. There you go, but give your parents a chance, everyone. Nobody loves you as much as your parents do, and yes, a good relationship with your parents can ease their fears and worries. So, do you want your parents to get off your back? Well, try to understand them and form a stronger bond with them. That can help you out when it comes to getting your parents off of your back. So, here is some advice from experts on how teenagers can have a stronger relationship with their parents. So uh, mm. I hope you guys are all ready. I hope you're taking notes. And I hope the parents are taking notes too, because that can help as well. Yes, when we're giving advice, we're trying to give what we think are good recommendations, good ideas that can help a situation. Often we go to people with wisdom or experience if we're faced with a problem that we've never seen before or had to deal with, but 
We know other people who've lived a longer life or had many experiences. Those people could have advice. For example, Albert is glad for all of the advice that you've given him. Yes, today we are going to be getting advice from experts, so it's totally worthwhile. Pay attention to these tips or these pieces of advice. Now, these days, it's easy to send a text message or have an online chat. So here we've got technology. Parents these days are, in many situations, intimidated or worried about technology. Yeah, text messages and online chats, they might sound easy to you. They might be easy for you, but your parents might not understand them at all. Yes, technology is scary. Now, before we move on, let's talk about this word text. Okay, when we're talking about sending a text message, we are sending a message on our phone with words in it. We're not calling the person and talking to that person. We're opening up iMessage or some other app on our phone and we're sending a language message with written words. Yeah, those written words are called texts, okay? Each time you send one of these messages, you're sending a text. But yeah, those words themselves, they're also called text, by the way. The word text is a noun. You could say, for example, she sent a text saying that she'd be late. A text or a text message. Mm, and we can also use that as a verb, right? I texted you last night. That only means I sent you a short message by phone. No other type of written message would be called text as a verb. But when we text, it's because we want to chat with people or have a chat. Yes, chat can be a verb for a casual conversation. And a chat is a casual conversation and probably fairly short. You wouldn't have a four-hour chat with someone. That might be a little bit different. But just when you see someone and you make some small talk, you share some casual news or talk about what's going on in your life, that's the kind of thing you do with friends over coffee, with classmates or coworkers after lunch or something like that. Just small talk, just a friendly conversation. For example, I had a nice chat with my friend yesterday. We chatted about, you know, just things. Were you was, just life? Was this in a chat room on your computer? No, no, it was no. just you face know, to face on the street. Yeah, we just oh. ran into each other and had a nice little five-minute chat. That's good. Face-to-face -face contact sure. is a good thing. Yes, but face-to-face -face contact. Our article continues is still important. Oh. So chat rooms and texting, these things are great, but face-to-face -face contact. Don't forget it. So take a few minutes. Take a few minutes a day to sit down and talk with your parents. Don't text them. Don't email them. Those are two different things, by the way. And don't think you can open up like a chat room with them or something like that. Talk to them face-to-face, person-to-person. All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be back soon. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny. 爸妈会为了很多事情而心烦，他们会担心你的未来，担心你重蹈覆辙，犯下他们年轻时候犯的错。于是呢，在管教上就很容易会有摩擦，会让孩子们觉得爸妈怎么什么事都要管啊，好像自己一直活在显微镜底下。刚刚 Mike 老师就在开场的时候用到显微镜这个字，叫做 microscope。microscope 它是拼作 m i c r o s c o p e， 那这个字就表示显微镜。好，那么今天的课文是要提供一些专家的建议，要如何让青少年和父母的关系更加紧密。毕竟呢，跟父母的关系融洽可以减轻他们的恐惧跟担忧。这样一来，也许他们就会减少念你、叮咛你的次数了。刚刚 Jeff 老师用到一个片语，叫做 get off one's back。哎，看起来好像是从某个人的背下来，它其实是指不再批评某人，不再对某人唠叨。像这时候，如果旁边一直有人在对你唠叨，一直跟你说要怎么做，要怎么做，怎么做，怎么做，这时候你就可以说 Get off my back， 不要再念我了，不要再对我唠叨了。可是要注意看你是对谁讲，不要随便乱用。好，那我们再来看单字 advice， advice 它是指建议、意见、忠固。那这个字是不可数名词。如果你要表达一个建议，一则建议，可以说 a piece of advice。好 ，Michael 在解释单字时用到 recommendation 这个字，它是拼作 r e c o m m e n d a t i o n。recommendation 表示推荐或是建议
。好，那我们来看看课文的第一个建议是：虽然现在都是在传简讯啊，或是在线上聊天，这样沟通很容易嘛，可是其实面对面的接触还是很重要的。记得每天要花个几分钟坐下来和你的父母面对面说说话。好，那这边用到两个单字 ：text。Text 这个字当名词，它可以指正文文本。不过在课文里面，它是指文字简讯，意思就跟 text message 一样。那么 text 这个字也可以当动词来表达传简讯。好，下一个单字 chat，chat chat, 它可以当名词或当动词来表达聊天、闲聊。接回课文中。How parents and teens can get along. Next, don't bottle up your emotions. If an issue is important to you, tell your parents about it. Remember to avoid blaming anyone and let your parents share their feelings too. Lastly, to avoid arguments and fights, use the PEN method. PEN stands for pause, empathy, and needs. When you find yourself getting angry with your parents, pause and try to calm down before you continue. Use empathy to try to understand your parents' points of view. After you acknowledge their feelings, you can express your own needs. Okay, kids out there, technology is wonderful. It's great. Texting, emailing, all that stuff is super fantastic. But face-to-face -face contact is still really important. So establish that contact with your parents. Now, next, don't bottle up your emotions. Don't keep your emotions inside. Let them out in a healthy way. Now, speaking of your emotions, your emotions are your feelings. When you're talking about an emotion that you're feeling right now, you're talking about how you're feeling in that moment. Are you furious? Are you angry? Are you sad? These are all emotions. How you feel. By the way, this word emotion is a noun. For example. Brenda felt many emotions as she walked out of her old home for the last time. Hmm, she had a lot of feelings. It was a very emotional time to use the adjective. Yes, talk about your feelings. Talk about your emotions. Don't keep them inside. This is a really good lesson for everyone out there. As it says, if an issue is important to you. Tell your parents about it. If something in your life, either with your parents, your friends, your classmates, anything that's bothering you and making you unhappy, that is an important issue. So if it's important to you, tell your parents about it. Don't keep it in. Remember to avoid blaming anyone and let your parents share their feelings too. So this is especially if you're upset about something your parents did. Don't blame them. But say I am angry because you did this, and then let the parents say, "Well, I did this because I was worried about you," and then people can hopefully start to understand each other and not be so upset. Anyways, lastly, everyone, to avoid arguments and fights, use the pen method. The pen method. The pen method. The pen, pen method. P E N. Now,、okay. pen. P E N, pen stands for pause. Empathy and needs, P -E -N.、Uh. which is it's easy to remember because yes, we all know what a pen is, but、mm. these these letters are capitalized. They stand for something. The P stands for pause, the E stands for empathy, and the N stands for needs. Now, when you find yourself getting angry with your parents, pause. Step one, pause and try to calm down before you continue. Close your eyes, maybe, and take a couple of deep breaths, and then continue. Right. Don't get angry after you take the deep breaths. Continue breathing until your feelings, your emotions, calm down, and then E. Use empathy to try to understand your parents' points of view. Empathy is a fancy way of saying put yourself in the other person's shoes. Try to understand how you would feel. If you were that person, it, it takes some imagination and some thinking, but it also takes sort of opening up your heart and your emotions to understand why people 
are feeling certain ways. After you acknowledge their feelings, you can express your own needs, and this is the N P E N needs. So listen to their feelings, acknowledge them. Okay, your feelings are real. I understand they are important and valuable, and then express your own needs. Say what you need to be happy, and the parents will do the same, and hopefully. You can meet in the middle somewhere. There Problem you go. Problem solved. Fight avoided. The pen method works. Give it a try. All right, everyone. With that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be back soon. 好，第二个建议是不要压抑自己的情绪。如果某个问题对你来说很重要，那你就不要觉得爸妈什么都不懂，然后就藏在心里都不说。你应该试着把问题告诉父母，让他们来分享看法。好，那这边有一个单字 emotion， emotion 它表示情绪或是感情。我们在字尾加上 a l 会变成形容词 emotional， emotional 它是形容情绪上的，也可以形容激动的情感强烈的。好，那么文中用到 bottle up one's emotions， 它是指压抑、抑制某人的强烈情感，压抑某人的怒气等等的。好，那我们来看最后一个建议是要用 P E N 法则来避免争执吵架。P 就代表暂停，也就是 pause。那么 E 代表同理心，也就是 empathy。N 代表需求，也就是 needs。P E N 法则。那么当你发现自己在生爸妈的气，这时候要记得先暂停 pause， 让自己冷静下来，然后接着用同理心 empathy。试着去理解爸妈的观点。好，当你认可他们感受之后，我们再表达自己的需求 needs。好，那我们来看补充单字 acknowledge。acknowledge 这个动词表示承认、认可。那刚刚 Mike 老师提到说，同理心应该是要设身处地。老师用到 put oneself in somebody's shoes， 字面上意思是把自己放在某人的鞋子里。他其实是要表达说，就是自己站在某人的立场来考虑，去设身处地。接华课文中 ，How parents and teens can get along. Dirty clothes on the floor will probably still drive your parents crazy, but with healthy communication and understanding, maybe next time it doesn't have to lead to a fight. Okay, now if you follow the pen method, chances are you'll be able to de-escalate bad situations. I.e., you'll be able to turn a bad situation that might have turned into a fight into a much more civilized and nice and relaxed situation.、Mm -hmm. That being said, dirty clothes on the floor will probably still drive your parents crazy. So. Use the pen method and also pick up your stuff. It's true. This advice is good. This advice will help. The pen method should be good for avoiding big fights. But yes, some things that young people do will always bother their parents. And dirty clothes on the floor is a good example. So this will still probably, or probably still, drive your parents crazy. Probably this adverb means most likely. It's a good bet. This is what we think will happen because it's what usually happens. So even if you have the best relationship with your parents, your best friends, you tell them everything. If you leave your dirty underwear and socks all over the place, they will still be unhappy about、yes. that, probably. For example, it's probably a good idea to discuss this with the others first. If you want to be safe, talk about it. Don't do it on your own because that will probably. Cause a problem. Anyways,、mm. yes. If you don't pick up your room, your parents are probably still going to get mad at you, and、mm. maybe you can take maybe you can take revenge、games. on them some other way. Stay out too late.、But、don't do your homework. These things、yeah. will make your parents crazy, no matter what. But、mm. with healthy communication and understanding, maybe next time it doesn't have to lead to a fight.、Mm. And by the way. I'm joking. Don't take revenge on your parents.、No. Remember, your parents love you more than anything in the world. All right, folks, that's it for our article. And now it's time for us to ask and then answer the what do you think question. 
Mike,、mm. which piece of advice is the most useful?、Mm, wow, there's a lot of good advice in the two days of our article. So I would say the most useful piece of advice is listening, because often when we have problems, we're very focused on our own feelings, on our own reason for being angry. So listening is really important. It lets you stop focusing on yourself. And understand the other person better. And often, if you really do listen, you'll find that what you want and what they want, it's actually not that different. Your needs are、yeah. the same. There you go. Pause. You, you, empathy. Needs. Just, I think you just sketched it all out. You、there. just have to get over being upset about things and work towards a solution. There you go. Everyone, with that, our lesson is now complete, and it's time for us to say bye bye. Take care. 好 ，Jeff 老师说到，遵循 P E N 法则，也许可以缓和父母和子女之间的紧张关系。那这时候老师用到 de escalate 这个字，它是拼作 d e 连字号 e s c a l a t e。好，其中这个 escalate 它有逐步升高、增强的意思。那我们在前面加上 d e 连字号 de escalate， 则是指减低紧张情绪或是缓和。好，那么课文最后提到说，丢在地上的脏衣服可能还是会让爸妈俩公，可是呢，有了健康的沟通跟理解，也许下一次就不会引起争执了。那我们最后来看单字 ，probably， probably 这个副词表示或许、可能。那么补充单字 ，communication。Communication， 它表示沟通、通讯。好，那么以上是这些讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有五个。第一个是 these days， 第二个是 it is 加形容词加不定词，第三个是 find 加受词加受词补语，第四个是 try to 加原形动词，第五个是 calm down。我们先来学 these days。副词片语 these days 就是用来指现在、如今。例如 ，It seems that everyone has a smartphone these days. 如今似乎每个人都有一只智慧型手机，人手一机。好，接着我们来学句型 it is 加形容词加不定词。好，这个句型当中的 it 是虚主词，用来代替真正的主词，就是不定词 to v 的部分。用来表达说做某事是怎么样怎么样的，例如 ，It is fun to play video games with friends. 跟朋友一起打电动很好玩。接着我们来学 find 加受词加受词补语。动词 find 在这边是指发现、发觉，后面接受词加受词补语是用来表达发现某人或某事物处于某一种状态。那受词补语可以用现在分词、过去分词、形容词或是介系词片语。例如 ，The police officers found the man's behavior suspicious. 警官发现那名男子的行为很可疑。好，再造一个例句。She often finds herself thinking about the boy. 她时常发现自己在想着那个男孩。我对你数来数去，数来数去。算了，下一首<笑>不是下一个文法重点，讲错。好，接着我们来学 try to 加上原形动词。try 当动词，它有试图、努力、尝试的意思。之后呢，可以接不定词，也就是 to v 来表达设法、努力去做某事。例如 ，I tried to get in touch with Brad. But he didn't answer his phone yesterday. 我试着联络 Brad， 但他昨天都没有接电话。哎，好，那最后我们来学 calm down。片语动词 calm down 是不及物用法来表达冷静下来。如果你的朋友很紧张或者是很激动，这时候你就可以对他对他说 take a deep breath and calm down， 深呼吸，并且冷静下来。来，跟我做一次。啊，这世界多么的美好！啊，空气多么的清新，是不是好多呢？好，以上是今天的重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。用英文叫外送餐点。Hi everybody. 
欢迎来到就爱讲英文，我是 Holly。Hi everybody， I'm Shane。Sorry about that. I'm hungry, Holly. Hungry, hungry, hungry. OK， 饿了。那今天就是 I'm feeling kind of lazy。Yeah， me too. Yeah， 我有一点就是有点懒，不想出去。哎、yeah. ，这时候要怎么办 ？Let's send out for pizza. 啊，招外送，我们来叫个 pizza。Yeah， let's send out for hamburgers.、Oh. Let's send out for whatever. Yeah， let's send out for everything. Wow， yeah，、Sorry. new year. Send out for a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So, like, 我现在 actually 就是要打电话去叫外送了。那这时候那个店员可能就会说，哎、hey,。你是要自取还是要外送 ？Will that be for pickup or delivery? Oh, okay. So pickup 就是自取、mm. ，delivery 就是他帮你送。对，我自己拿，我自己去那个店，对， mm-hmm. 就是 pickup。Okay, pizza 他会问你说，哎，上面要放什么配料？哦、oh, ，你 toppings， right？ What、yeah. toppings？ Toppings. What kind of toppings do you want on your pizza? Okay. Well, I personally don't think pineapple belongs on pizza. What's wrong with you? Pineapple is delicious. No, pizza 上面不能放凤梨，绝对不能接受。Don't Anyways, listen, don't listen. Okay. So we're still talking on the phone. Uh huh. Okay. So 这时候店员就说 ，OK， 我为你重复一下刚刚的餐点，确定是对的。Okay. 这时候说什么 ？Let me repeat your order to make sure I have everything right. Okay. So repeat 就是重复。的意思 ，OK， 所、so、以 your order， 你的餐点重复一次 ，OK。So are you ready to do live action? I'm definitely ready, and then eat some pizza. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's do it. Right, let's do it. I'm starving. Want to eat? Yes. Let's send out for pizza. Okay. ABC Pizza, how can I help you? I'd like to order a large pizza, an order of hot wings, and two medium cokes. Sure. What kind of toppings do you want on your pizza? Mushrooms and green peppers. Okay. Let me repeat your order to make sure I have everything right. A large pizza with mushrooms and green peppers, an order of hot wings, and two medium cokes. Is that correct? Perfect. Okay. The total will be twenty-five fifty. Will that be delivered to the address we have on record? Yes, please. Great. Your order should arrive in less than thirty minutes. Thanks for choosing ABC Pizza. Thank you. Bye bye. Number one, let's send out for pizza. Number two, will that be for pickup or delivery? Number three, what kind of toppings do you want on your pizza? Number four, let me repeat your order to make sure I have everything right. <laughs>